Good morning, everyone. Let's get started uh, with a few announcements. We have our uh, Bible studies on Tuesday night at the Monroe's and Thursday nights here at the church. Uh, we're still collecting canned fruit for the Big Flats Food Pantry. A big shout out and thank you to everyone that helped uh, with the chicken barbecue yesterday. Uh, it sounded like it was a, a big success. And I believe uh, Ken will be back next week. And I think we're having the next in the vision uh, sessions. Uh, so I'll, we'll send out a, a Facebook um, if there's any change to that. Other than that, I don't think there's any new announcements. So let's quiet our hearts and minds as we listen to the prelude.
Testing? Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Good morning again. You can all hear me now, uh, including online. So, welcome. Let us open our service with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we have come together to give you praise and worship. Clear our hearts and minds and bring us to a point of focus on you and your word for each of us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, we're off to a, a great start this morning. Everything's working. Our call to worship this morning is in Romans uh, chapter 4, verses 18 through 25. Against all hope, Abraham, in hope, believed, and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since it was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead, yet being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised, this is why it was credited, credited to him in righteousness. The words it was credited to him were written not for him alone, but for us also, to whom God will credit righteousness for us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Worship team.
Thank you, Lord. Well, now is the time that we come together for prayer and praise. Yeah, so, um, continued prayers for the Sterlings, 
uh, for their water and their dry well uh, situation, and for Bob's health and his blood pressure to return to normal. The Bible tells us to pray for our leaders, and let's pray for our nation. It needs it so badly, we need prayer. Let's thank the Lord for all those in service, whether it's in the military, police, firemen, EMTs, hospital workers, teachers, all those in service to us. Thank you, God. Carol's requesting prayer for Lily. Uh, Lily's been disappointed a couple times this week. Uh, when a family splits apart, it's so hard on the children. So let's pray for not only Lily, but other children that are going through this. Also continued prayers with the moods for their daughter, Becky, uh, with health issues. And uh, praises uh, with the Dabrowskis that Marion is feeling somewhat better. Hallelujah. That's good. I want to praise God for uh, uh, a mission opportunity yesterday at Higher Hope. Uh, interestingly enough, it was 650 chickens. And, uh, yeah, and um, David and I were over there. Uh, what a great, uh, what a great team, and uh, a uh, an example of uh, there was uh, two or three uh, chicken barbecues in the area yesterday, and they were able to say, "But ours is free." So, um, oh, the Canfields brought cookies. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Very nice. Yeah, a lot of many, many hands made light work. And there's, yeah, it's, it's a lot, of, it's a good story. Uh, and Adam Hungerford, who we know, is, uh, was helping, and uh, it was good to share time with him. Uh, and the Meniers, whom uh, donated this, this property years and years and years ago, were instrumental in, in helping Adam in a big way. We want to lift up uh, Butch uh, and uh, the session. Um, and uh, his word, um, his word is very, very powerful. We want to lift up the medical community concerns uh, for there's an evil spirit, I think, in this world, in this, in this nation. Uh, we have uh, COVID to, to, to deal with and cancer and illnesses. Uh, we want to pray for our sister churches, uh, Princetown and Silver Lake, and uh, Again, thanks for the mission opportunities. There's other mission opportunities just between, besides um, uh, Higher Hope and working with others. And uh, they, they're easy to find. Or maybe not so easy to find, but they're, if you lift, op open your ears and eyes, you can see them. Um, we pray for uh, uh, Larry and Marion again. I'm thankful for Marion's uh, recovery. Uh, our family members. And uh, strength, we pray for the strength to help those in need. Uh, we pray for, uh, pray to God for our livelihoods and our neighbors. Uh, and um, the Sterlings brought up an interesting, uh, an unfortunate thing. The well water, we, uh, we would like to ask God for water. <laughs> I know we haven't mentioned it yet uh, lately, but <clears throat> just remember all the missions that our church supports too. Um, we probably should do a moment for missions at some time soon, but um, we still financially support them all, but I know they could use our prayers on a regular basis. I think even Sarah Jane was home for some home time and then she was going to have an open house, but that got canceled because she got COVID right before she had that over a higher, I think it was going to be a higher hope, but... Um, just hoping to get with everybody when she comes home the next time. But, but yeah, just keep every, all those missions in, in our prayers, too. Any others? Anything else? Okay, let's take those to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, there are so many health issues today. 
Father, I just lift them up to you. I lift up specifically Bob and what he's going through right now. And I, it's such a praise to hear that Marion's feeling better. And Father, I just ask that all of those that have health issues, all those that are dealing with even health issues that allow them to come to church, but they're still suffering, Father, I just ask you to ease the pain, heal their bodies, give them strength, show them your love, Father, as only you can do. And Father, lift up our leaders. Uh, this country is, is going through a really, really rough time now. Prices are out of sight, and people are having trouble buying food and gas at the same time, and they got to go to work to get food and all those things. Father, you know what's going on. You are in control. You know exactly what's happening. But Father, I ask you to specifically lift up the leaders that we have from locally all the way to the, to the U.S. government, Father, that you just lift them all up. You guide them and you direct them in the way that you would have them to go. Father, I lift up um, the issue of not having any rain. Uh, it, from what I understand, starting maybe later today and all day tomorrow, we're going to have some in this area. We certainly need it. Uh, it would be nice to see green grass again. In the missions, Father, whether it's locally on Saturday at a chicken barbecue or around the world, Father, I just lift up all our missions that we support, and specifically the missionaries that are carrying out those missions, Father, I just raise them all up to you. Uh, there are people in harm's way, Father, and I know that you're there with them and you're giving them that peace that only you can give and you're giving them that protection that they need. Father, I just want to raise them up as our little church here in Big Flats and to, again, just bring it before you, Father, that we are concerned about our missions and missionaries and we just ask you to guide them, direct them, and give them peace. And Father, for all the things like the beautiful day you've given us and the rain you've promised us tomorrow, I, Father, I just think that, uh, thank you for that. And I'm just going to go ahead and praise you Ahead of the ahead of the rain, because I, I know it's coming. I believe it's coming. And I thank you again for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Offering. Uh, this is a time of offering. There are plates in the back on the little table before you go out the back door, if you ever go out that way. And there are plates in the front. You can leave at either place. You can mail it to TTEPC, P.O. Box 261, Big Flats, New York, 14814. Um, we are a very generous church. I'm, I've been amazed at the number of people we've had with the pastor leaving and COVID and all the things going on. We still continue to be profitable in this church. And what I mean by profitable is we're able to pay our missions and pay our missionaries and pay our bills, and uh, we have not had to worry about any of that along the way, and we're ready to even pay a pastor if we can find one. So, uh, The Lord is blessing this church, and, and it's because of the folks in this church that the Lord is blessing this church. So let's um, give a prayer for our offering. Most gracious Heavenly Father, please take this offering as a sign of worship for your glory. Lord, please take these gifts and use them as there is need. Cause our acts of offering to be a blessing for your kingdom in everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Worship team. Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, open our hearts and our minds to your spirit. Guide the speaker in everything I say, and any words that are not of you, let them be quickly forgotten. Our scripture reading this morning is from Romans 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, We have a peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. This is the word of the Lord. The message this morning, which you probably would have a lot of difficulty picking up out of that verse I just read, uh, is how do I encourage? And uh, the reason I picked that verse is because I thought about where does encouragement really start? It starts with ourselves, and it starts with our hope. Our ability to encourage comes from our hope our hope in Christ, and our hope in one day living eternally with with God Almighty. Our hope and our faith is in Jesus. He died, was resurrected, and sits at the right hand of God. We know that one day we will live eternally in heaven. That's our hope. But how do we keep hope strong in our day-to-day lives? With all that's going on in the world today, both locally and worldwide, fear, doubt creep in almost unnoticed. Sometimes we wonder about our own lives. Do you ever have, why me, Lord? (laughs) Sometimes we get lonely. Sometimes we are facing major problems, health, financial, family issues, sin issues. So how do we keep our hope strong? We know all the immediate answers prayer, read scripture, focus on our relationship with the Lord, and they're all good answers. But the Lord, through his word, gives us another answer. And it doesn't seem quite so obvious, although it is there. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 18, it says, therefore, encourage one another with these words. Now, the therefore comes, Paul had just explained to uh, them the rapture. The dead go up first, and the living follow to meet him in the clouds. Encourage one another with these words. And he's talking about 
not stepping out necessarily at this point to the world, but he's talking about encourage one another. We in the body need to be encouraging one another. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 12 through 15, it says, Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard, in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and destructive, or disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Yes, we need to encourage. We need to uplift one another by showing our love to one another. How do we do that? Well, I got a little help, and I'm going to throw in a little advertisement here. This book came out of our library in the back. The Power of Encouragement by Dr. David Jeremiah. And he gave me four reasons or ways that we can do it. And to be honest, I'm sure there are more. But this will give you kind of an idea about how we can encourage one another. What we sense, what we hear, what we read, and what we feel. What does it mean we get encouragement from what we sense? Well, the first story I went to was Mary and Martha. You remember the story when Jesus came to the house? Martha went in, she's making dinner, setting the table, cleaning the house, whatever she's doing in there, she's doing, getting ready for taking care of her guest. Whereas Mary sat down at the feet of Jesus. While Martha, somewhere through the process, decided that Mary's missing, where is she? I need help. She goes out to get Mary and, and ask why that Mary isn't in there helping her. When Jesus straightened her out and said that there, are, there is a time for everything, but Right now, Mary had chose what Mary needed to choose. She sensed that it was more important to her, uh, for her to be at the feet of Jesus than it was in the house preparing meals and, and doing all that other stuff because the, obviously the Holy Spirit prompted her to a point where she wanted to hear what Jesus had to say, maybe not realizing that he wasn't going to be there forever. I thought of another uh, instance that, that happens occasionally to us. That, you know, you sit down for dinner, you, your meal's ready, you sit down for dinner, you look out the window and your neighbor can't start his car. Do you go help him? Your meal's ready. It's going to be cold if you go help him. But yet you don't know why he's in a hurry to get out of his house and get his car started and, and he looks like he's a little bit frazzled over there. I found in most cases when we have a debate with ourselves about should I go or should I not go, we probably should. <laughs> the truth is that the meal can be heated up. It can be fixed later. But you never know what your neighbor really needs. He may be hurrying out to get some medicine for his wife, or he may be getting food for a baby, or he may have some important thing that he needs to be to. In that couple minutes of your time to help him jump his car or start his car, made a whole difference in his day. In reheating your meal, did that make such a difference in yours? Probably not. But I found that when I have to debate it in my mind, should I go or shouldn't I, the answer is pretty obvious. If I have to debate it, then I probably should go. What we hear, we can lift or encourage each other with a smile. And I put that under what we hear, because, you know, a, a smile says a thousand words. You know, when, when you walk into church as an example, and, and you look around and somebody looks up and smiles, that's like saying, hey, glad you're here. Hey, happy to see you. Hey, it's nice to see you again. It, it is a way of lifting you up without actually saying a word, but it lifts people up when you smile at them. Walking down the street, you see a neighbor. You don't have to yell at them, just smile at them. You're saying a lot to him, just acknowledging the fact that he's there. It lifts him up. 
or an honest and sincere word. Uh, you could anything I can pray for? How are you doing today? You look pretty sharp this morning. Encouraging words. When you take your time to speak to someone, that means that you care enough about them to speak to them. It lifts them up and encourages them. And, and it's a way for us to encourage people every day. What we read. Of course, Scripture. That is, you know, we have a whole book full of encouragement here. But when we're trying to encourage someone else, uh, grabbing the Bible and running up to them and reading a verse probably uh, isn't going to be your first choice, or it may not even be, uh, they may not be able to do it at the time. Some people like to send cards. Some people like to send letters. My sister uh, sends cards for her church because she, she's not... Uh, an outgoing person, typically, but she can write a, a nice note and a card and send it to the people and encourage them and put a verse, and, and that to her is a way of lifting people up. She writes letters to our family because that's a way for her to tell people what she's thinking. And these letters or cards can easily be filled with different types of encouragement, a verse or a word or just the fact that Sorry to hear you're feeling bad. I'm praying for you that you get well quick. It doesn't take a lot to lift people up, but we need to be lifting up one another because we're all fighting the battle every day. This next one, I, got, I have to say, I got a little chuckle out of this. What we feel. Sometimes a Christian hug. And Kathy, I thought of you first. <laughs> uh, Kathy Mood is a, uh, is a hugger. She likes to hug, and, and I appreciate that, because I do too. And, uh, but it's uplifting to reach out and hug someone when they walk up. You know, we, we used to meet and greet, so to speak, uh, every morning, and we've gotten away from that because of COVID. I hope someday we get back to that, because it's so important that we have a minute with each person. We don't get to see a lot of you all the time, except on Sunday morning sitting in a pew. And, and we need to be able to express ourselves a little closer to you and, and talk to you and, and spend a couple seconds with you more often than we do. For us men, it's more likely a handshake or a pat on the back. And you know what? I can love you, brother or sister. Or, or just adding, and I love you, brother or sister, really means a lot. It could make it perfect with that hug, or with that handshake, or with that pat on the back. Sense, hear, read and feel. Let the Holy Spirit be your guide. He will lead you just where you need to go. Encouraging others also encourages us. I don't know if you realize that, but when you become an encouraging person to other people, you become uplifted yourself. That's the way God works. When you give out his love, he just gives you more. 1 Thessalonians 3.12 says, And may the Lord cause you to increase and overflow with love for one another and for everyone else, just as our love for you overflows. Ephesians 4.29 takes it a little deeper. Let no unwholesome word come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building up the, need, um, the one in need and bringing grace to those who listen. Scripture gives us many ways to encourage. We're family. We sometimes forget that, I think. But we are, we're family. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to love and encourage one another. To keep our attitude right, to keep our strength up. No one should feel unloved in the family of God. First of all, God will always love you. God is always there. He always has his arms out for you. But he charges us to encourage one another, to lift up one another, to love one another. We need to be different than the world.
if we can't lift up each other then, how can we reach out and lift up someone in the world? If we can't lift up each other, then we're not going to be a whole lot of uh, good in the outside world because we certainly wouldn't be able to lift them up either. If we can't be open and honest with our family, with our brothers and sisters in Christ, then we certainly are going to have difficulty in, in sharing the word with the rest of the world and telling them what they need. And yes, we are to encourage the world, but sometimes we need to realize our own family needs encouragement. And the Lord not only wants us to lift up one another, He expects it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for all you do in our lives. This morning we are focusing on your love, hope, and encouragement. We ask for your spirit to make these a daily part of our lives. Remind us to lift up and encourage each other as scripture tells us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Worship team.
our benediction this morning. Lord, bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us in praise and worship. Thanks. <laughs> nice uniform, guys. <laughs> <laughs>